And now, time for a review of Curse Kingdom, an Aaliyah big box game from Ravensburger. All right, first off, I do have to disclose I did receive a review copy of this game from Ravensburger. No other compensation was provided. Carpe Diem was designed by Steffenfeld, features art by Lalanda Hrushka, was published in 2018 by Ravensburger in North America. Uh, it's considered part of the Aaliyah Big Box series of games. Now, this tile lane game plays two to four players in about an hour to an hour and a half, maybe a little longer on your first play. To see what you get when you pick up a copy of Carpe Diem, be sure to check out our unboxing video over on YouTube. you find a link to that in the show notes. Now, I'm not going to take the time to list out all the components you get here, but I will say this has an excellent rule book. Uh, one of the things Aaliyah does, this is something Aaliyah does great, and I think it's worth calling them out on because it's so good, is they have a standard format for the rule books where they have the rules on the right hand or in the main text, and they have a sidebar that summarizes these rules. And those are so awesome as a quick refresher before play or just before game night when it's been a while since you played. And it was awesome to see that format. I was also really happy to see resource meeple um, instead of wooden cubes. There's no reason the grapes had to look like grapes. They could have been purple cubes. Uh, and the reason I call this out is Aaliyah and Ravensburger for years were very much that dry Euro, very dry wooden cube components. And it's nice to see that they are spending some more time on the visual appeal of their games. Okay, well, how about you tell us a bit about the gameplay in Carpe Diem? All right, so to set up Carpe Diem, you're going to take a random player board, surround it with ran a random frame. And it's interesting to note that the frames are all different. So you're going to get a random frame and build it. You're going to take a patrician meeple. Um, this is a the note. Sorry, I should have, I, I'm terrible at remembering to mention the theme. The theme of this game is you are a Roman patrician who is trying to build up their own personal villa and area of town. Um, there's a reason I don't talk about the theme much in this game, though. So you're going to take your patrician, you're going to put it on an unoccupied spot on this wheel that's on the central board. You're going to take a set of scoring objective cards that are laid out on the side of the board. These are strongly based on the number of players. And then you're going to take a scroll, place a scroll, they're banderolas, banderolis, we still haven't figured out how to pronounce this word. Banderoli is, I was, as far as I can tell, it's B-A-N-D-R- or sorry, B-A-N-D-E-R-R-O-L-E. -E. However, that no, there's only one R. I got an extra R in there. But uh, you take one of these and, and throw it down on the spot that shows scrolls on your board. So you put a scroll token on every scroll spot on your board. You then fill that central market wheel. Every spot gets four random tiles. They happen to come from the light green set. And then there's a set of spots at the bottom of the board you fill with the dark green set. And these just change what's possible on each tile. Now, Carpe Diem's played over four rounds. Each round, you're going to draft tiles from that central board until it runs out. When you draft the tile, you're going to put it on your personal player board. Once they're all drafted, the round ends, you're going to do a scoring round, then you're going to put out a bunch more new tiles. At the end of the fourth round, which is the final round, there is some end game scoring. Now, on your turn, it's dead simple. Mechanically, you're going to take your Patrician, you're going to move it one space left or right, and you're going to take a tile from where you ended. You're then going to add that tile to your board. First one has to go over the shovel on your board. From then on, they have to touch. Tiles, of course, have to make sense. They have to be placed so the features match on all sides. So think Carcassonne and pretty much every tile game out there. When you complete a feature on your board, you're going to get something. And if you cover one of those scrolls, you go up on the Banderoli, Banderol track. Now, the features on the tiles are what make the game. There are four different types. There are fields. These are oval, and they give you resources. They can be two to four tiles long, and there are four different types of fields giving four different resources. Then there are buildings. These are always exactly two tiles to complete it. Each building is going to give you some reward. Silver buildings move you up on that track I mentioned. Gold buildings are going to let you trade in your resources for gold, which are wild cards. And brown buildings provide bread. Bread lets you break the rules, like move your guys not adjacent but anywhere on the map. Finally, there are green buildings, which allow you to draft a bonus tile from that bottom roll. Remember, when we set up, we put a bunch of buildings at the bottom as well from a different bag of things. They're, they're darker, and they're, they're all terminuses. Now, features, uh, they don't call them this in the game, but I called them features. But these are single tiles that have special rules where they don't connect to anything. As soon as you put it in your villa, you get points or you get something. There's a bakery that gives you bread, a smith that provides gold, and a fountain. Now, the fountain gives you a deck of cards. We're going to draw two cards and keep one. Those are all endgame scoring. Finally, there are villas. This represents your house in your little Roman district. 
These can be of any size, can grow to cover your whole board if you really want. And each tile features a number of chimneys on top, which is something important, both in-game and end-game scoring. So, uh, as D mentioned in the chat room on this game, this is a very Euro paste it on team game. Mm -hmm. uh, this could be pretty much anything you wanted it to be. But yeah. as an Aaliyah big box, they go with the historicals. So it turns out it's going to be, you know, the Roman, the Roman area. Yeah, that's I, Steffenfeld must like Romans. Like uh, he puts out Trajan for him, Trajanum, uh, Ultra, something. Uh, he, he does a lot of Roman themed games. He also seems to like German economic games, so like the speakers that. But yeah, this this is probably one of the most pasted on themes I've ever seen in a game. So once you've got your tiles and all of them are gone, you're going to score. And here is part of the killer app of this game. Uh, that banderol track I mentioned is going to determine who goes first. So being first on that's big because you're going to get to score first. And what you're going to do is there's a grid of scoring cards and you're going to put a token between two of them saying, I'm going to score those two things. And once someone's chosen that, for the rest of the game, that spot's done. Those two cards have been scored because of where it's placed. Now, these scoring cards, there is no way I can recap even close to all of them, but there's going to be all kinds of things based on what you have on your board. So you're going to get points for resources you trade in or for having certain building types or for having three different types of fields or for having all the same fields or for having how many chimneys you have on your villa and so on. There are a ridiculous, the deck of, Scoring cards is is significant, we'll just say. And what's neat is they're distributed, so there's always going to be some two cards that score villas, and there's always going to be something that needs resources, and there's always going to be something that needs fields. Now, at the final round, in addition to choosing those objective cards, there is some ungood scoring. Anything you have left over you didn't spend, you're going to get points for. How far you're up on that banner roll track, you're going to get points for. There's those fountain cards I mentioned earlier that are end game scoring. You're going to get points for those. And then finally, you're going to count up your chimneys on your completed villas and get massive points if you have a high number of those. I think you're aiming for like 18 by the end of the game for the max points. So along with his Roman team, much like Caesar, he likes his point salad. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> much like Caesar. Yes. It's a Steffenfeld game. It's a point salad. Who knew? Um, there is obviously a bit more to that. Red can be used to move anywhere, gold's a wild resource, and so on. But you know what? That's enough to give uh, a pretty good gist of how Carpe Diem plays out without seeing it in front of you. Well, I, we know that you are a fan of Feld, so I think we can yeah. guess where this review is going, but let's hear yeah. it. Yeah, it's true. I Like, at this point, I haven't found a Feld I didn't like, and Carpe Diem's not the first to break that rule. I, I dig it. This is a great game. This is a fantastic tile lane point salad. And what really has impressed me about this game isn't my reaction to it, it's other people's. I've yet to teach this to someone and have them not like it. The one that's really surprised me is this has won over a few of my non-Euro-loving fans. Like, there is a local gamer, I'm not going to call out by name, because he may take this as derogatory, and I don't mean it this way, but they like quick, light games. Like, one of their favorite games that's come out recently is Tiny Towns, and that's about at their level of wanting to plan ahead and think. Yet they love this. And I don't want to really point out and go, you realize you like a heavier Euro. Like, it just, I, I feel like they, they'd be like, oh, wait, no, I don't like that game anymore, right? Like, I, I, this has totally won over some gamers I never thought would enjoy a Steppenfeld. Like, they tend to avoid any game that causes brain burn because to them, playing games isn't about thinking, it's about having fun, right? Yet, here they are, loving it. Now, I will admit, the game isn't perfect. Uh, the artwork, to me, is boring and drab and... Some of the tiles and colors are really hard to tell apart from a distance. Specifically, the, the brown chicken farms and the brown buildings until you're standing right on top. Now, they did try to do something where the fields are round and the buildings are square, but uh, it's it's rough. Like, everything just needs to pop more. They need to up the contrast, isn't the right word, the intensity of, of everything and just make it pop more, especially when you're trying to see other players' boards. And as Sean mentioned, and I'll say, this is one of the most pasted on themes I've ever seen. Like, this could be so easily, not only just rethemed, but like rethemed to almost anything. Like, it's just, I don't know. It, it, it's it's terrible for that. But to be honest, none of this, the, 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 the drab look or the pasted on theme does not affect the gameplay. And it's the gameplay that I love. And I am always looking for something new in a game. And the, the, the kicker to me in this game, besides just being a really solid tile lane game, is that scoring system. 
I love how variable it is. It's the fact you use a small subset of the entire deck of cards each game means every game's going to play different. And I don't know what the possible combinations are, but it beats um, Imhotep's 1028 by far. Uh, what objectives cards come out is going to totally change the way players play and how they're going to build their territories. So now I know you're going to, I'm jumping ahead a little bit here, but we, when you look at tile lane games, so let's so say king, king and queen domino, right? Those are kind yep. of a, a good average level. Most people can get a, can get their, can dig their teeth into king and queen domino. Is this a next level? Is this something that if you really love those, you know, your king and queen domino, you should look towards king, uh, Carpe Diem, or is this still a little bit too far of a step? No, I think you nailed it there. This is what I think. I, I like the most about this. This is a heavier tile lane game. Tile lane games, for whatever reason, tend to be easier, simpler, easier to learn, quicker to play. And this is this is a step up from King Domino, Isle of Sky, Carcassonne, any of those games. And I think if you're a fan of those games and you're looking for more of the same, no. But if you are looking for that step up, that additional challenge, that I want a game where my my planning ahead is really re rewarded. You can't plan ahead in Kark. Well, okay, I'm gonna eventually close in this city. Like, yeah, I'm going to build this long road because I know eventually I'm going to draw another road. That's not the same level of strategy you're going to find in a game like this. This is more about I'm going to try to score that scoring card and that scoring card or this one, but I know other people are playing, so I'm going to have a backup plan to possibly get this one or that one. You don't have that level of strategic play in any of those games. Isle of Sky, King Domino, Queen Domino, Carcassonne, whereas that's what this tosses into that mix is I... I Many of those games are tactical, where you have to re, um, change your, your play based on what happened right then, whereas this does have tactical elements, especially if someone takes that damn tile you wanted before you get to it. That's definitely part of the game, but it really rewards strategic play, that long-term thinking. Now, the one that still surprises me is the fact that this one has proven to be popular with gamers who love heavy, meaty stuff like Deanna, and gamers who like like quicker games. And that, I think, is one of the neat things to see. At this point, I think, if you are a Feld fan, just pick up this game. Like, if you like Feld, you're going to dig this. It's a point salad. It's got the Roman theme, if that's your thing. Uh, if you like Kark or other tile lane games and you're looking for a next step, grab it. For everyone else, give it a shot. Uh, try to find a copy, find a store, do a demo. Ask me to bring it out if you happen to know me. I think there's a lot here to enjoy for gamers of almost all experience levels. Now, I would not throw this in as a gateway. This is not something I would throw in as your first game. But as long as you played a couple tile games, if you've got that concept of drafting, I think this is worth checking out. Well, for a more in-depth look at Carpe Diem, check out Mo's written review over at tabletopbellhop.com just on reviews.